Hey folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier. We uh, are going to discuss, or I'm going to discuss, Sanctuary 2022. That's the year of the film's official release. Uh, but I saw it last night, and I don't know if this is one of those indie films that did some festival circuits last year, and now it's gotten a bigger distributor. Um, I, I want to say her name is Margaret Qualley. <clears throat> I try to remember. She played Rebecca... Some other, the other actor, lead actor played Hal. First off, should you see this movie? I think so. I think it's a, if you're an intellectual, if you're looking for something besides the, you know, the Spider-Mans and the big blockbuster movies of the summer, the Fast X, the this one, the that one, the 3D. If you're looking for a character study, it's a good movie to see. I don't know if it's an all time classic, but I think it's pretty good. So let's get into the review. And spoiler alert. Um, so what's this movie all about, Sunshine? Well, first we meet Hal. Uh, he's your, you know, typical early 30s, mid 30s kind of businessman, asshole. He's in an expensive hotel. He's on his fucking phone making things happen. As we learn, he's basically an inheritance uh, millionaire or billionaire, maybe a millionaire. His father, I guess, you know, owned a hotel. Uh, Mr. Potterfield is his father who owned this hotel franchise and was kind of a, uh, what was that guy's name, Zig Ziglar? Um, you know, one of these motivational speaker guys who's also a rich tycoon, kind of the old, you know, Rockefeller era tycoon types. So his son is, uh, has inherited, inherited the uh, head of this giant hotel corporation, we're learning. And uh, right now he's in a hotel room himself. It's not clear if that's his family's hotel franchise, but it would probably make sense if it was. And then, ding, ding, we have a... F well, first he's ordering some type of breakfast. He's ordering this big expensive breakfast from room service. And then, ding, ding, the bell rings, and we're wondering, is that the fucking you know, room service so quick? Nope, it's a beautiful woman. Dun, 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 dun. And off to the race as we go. So the beautiful woman comes in, and at first, for the, you know, spoilers, for the first five minutes or so, we're supposed to think that she's just some type of, I guess, an inheritance lawyer, uh, or she's, she's interviewing him for a position as a CEO, like she's some type of person that's interviewing him to make sure that he's qualified to run this business, or... A different business or some such thing but you can kind of tell at least I could pretty early on that there's more to it than what it seems and what it is is basically she is uh, because he stops her from saying what she's saying he's saying go back to my script and so they kind of take a break and then it's revealed that she is reciting words from a very detailed script that he's written and to cut to the chase from what we understand at this point in the movie, she's a high-end, non-sexual prostitute, which is kind of interesting. She's uh, hired by him to fulfill these kind of fetish fantasies of being dominated by a, a tough cookie hot chick. Um, but no fucking is involved. You know, no sex necessary, high-end prostitution. Good deal for her. Uh, very attractive uh, actress uh i believe her name is margaret qualley uh, i looked at her imdb page apparently she was born in montana but lived in north carolina and uh kind of young nicole kidman-esque i would say uh if you ever saw to die for with nicole kidman kind of reminded me of that the femme fatale the thin uh intense intense eyes kind of porcelain doll beauty type you know what I mean? Not the not the vivacious Marilyn Monroe bombshell big bust type, but like the more intense, you know, <clears throat> streamlined type of female femme fatale. Uh, and for you know, the guy in this movie did his part. I mean, I think she's the dynamic, the di dynamic character. I mean, she's the one that has the most fun um, as an actress, and also as the character is more fun you know, playing the dominatrix, the intellectual dominatrix of sorts, and he's kind of the asshole rich guy schlub. And then as this movie progresses, um, 
you know, and we're pretty much in this hotel room, I'd say for 95% of this movie with these two characters for just 99% of the movie, there's literally only by my count, two other characters that make a physical presence and that they're basically extras who get onto the elevator. And then you have a couple of things like you have Hal talking to his mother on the phone. And I guess there was a voice actress who played the mom on the phone, but we don't see her. And then we have the picture of his father on the book. Um, but really this is a two person show. So, I mean, this is the type of movie that some people are going to fall off on just because it's not cinematic in a sense there's no fucking cops and robbers there's no save the planet there's no uh you know stuff you know what i mean there's no stuff going on that you might feel as part of your 15 dollar or 20 dollar investment to see a movie of course i do the subscription plans you know the amc subscription which i always you know they should be fucking under quarantine me they should be giving me the goddamn things. I plug it so much, not just on these wonderful videos, but on just talking to human beings in person. I always say, get these goddamn subscriptions. Regal's got one. Regal's got a great one, actually. Although I think their local theater here in Jacksonville has gone under the Phillips Highway location. Uh, AMC's got one. Cinemark has a less intrusive one or a less involved one. But all these subscription plans are for your benefit as a consumer as a film goer and i know what every asshole says when i mention it oh i don't go to the movies that much well fuck for brains if you had one of these goddamn subscriptions you probably would go to the movies more often and you'd probably keep the industry alive so that people like me can make my goddamn movies my wonderful scripts fighter play basketball a distance from avalon all my fucking scripts that have not been made but anyway let's get back to this fucking review um, the woman is gorgeous. I mean, she's just really fucking hot, uh, both the actress and the character, but it does, uh, this is the thing for some goddamn reason. I was thinking about the movie, uh, pretty woman from 1990. And I was thinking about that, not when I saw this movie, but before that, it just occurred to me and I've had this thought before. Maybe I was thinking about doing why I don't like the movie pretty woman video. I don't like the movie pretty woman. I never liked it. Um, I just feel that it's, first of all, it's just dark and it's gloomy and it's depressing. And it's just, I don't see why everyone finger bangs themselves over Pretty Woman, the movie. It's nothing against Richard Gere. He's a great actor. It's nothing against Julia Roberts. I know it was her big break, blah, blah, fuck. But I just find the movie morbid and depressing and boring. And um, the whole thing of, you know, well, what happens when the prince rescues the princess? She rescues him right back. Okay. I mean, some rich asshole guy is not going to fucking finger fuck himself over some prostitute. And furthermore, no offense to all the prostitutes out there, but no prostitute is going to look like, you know, 22 year old Julia Roberts in 1990 or however the fuck old she was. It's just such fiction, such bullshit. Um, probably the most realistic character of that movie is, is, uh, Jason and, uh, Jason Alexander, you know, who, who's such a cynical little fuck of a character who's, who's like, Hey, if you're, you know, going to fuck him, why don't you fuck me? I'll give you money. And so, um, it's just, a, it, actually, there's a lot of stories about pretty woman. Apparently the original ending of the script was a lot darker and, uh, but they had to, you know, they had to make it nice and all that shit. I don't know if it was touch tone pictures or whatever the fuck it was, but I've always just, I kind of recoil at a uh, pretty woman, the movie. Uh, and I think this one, this movie guy kind of goes in some of those same avenues, but somewhat different, like kind of a different way to get to the same destination, which is, um, here you've got these layers and as an audience i give credit to the two actors especially the female but i think the guy did his part too whatever his name is who played hal um is really kind of a, a couple of unlikable characters in an unlikable scenario you know you've got rich people you've got a high-end non-sexual prostitute these are not characters to cheer for these are not save the cat characters they're kind of irredeemable but because of the plot complexity of, of the story is, you know, who's zooming who, who's manipulating who, who's the real victim. 
at one point I thought the big I, I knew that every time you turn around this movie there's some other reveal some other twist and turn I was kind of thinking that the twist and turn was going to be that he was the prostitute and that she had been paying him the whole time to go through this role playing like she's her you know fetish as a as a mark or a fucking john whatever you call a, a female prostitute user was that she wants to pretend that she's a prostitute and she's willing to pay uh for the service of his character providing that to her but they didn't go that way instead they kind of go all the fucking way around and they, they end up having sex and then he he ends they end up with knives to each other's throats and uh she's kind of confessing her actual love for this guy at some point and he doesn't really believe her and then they have kind of this like sweetheart of an ending like these two fucked up characters do all this fucked up shit together and at the end of the movie this guy who's you know hired this woman to go through this intricate play acting with him for his fetish you know he decides hey i'm gonna make an honest woman of her I'm going to give her my job of the CEO of this giant fucking company and I'm going to be a house husband, which she refers to as, quote, a slave, quote. So it's kind of like, okay, we had to girl boss our fucking ending here. Um, we tried to, I don't know what the fuck they tried to do. They tried to make some type of feminist girl boss, hashtag whatever the fuck, happy ending of this fucking story and I just I don't know I feel like the ending was a little disingenuous to what we had gone through and I think that's the problem you know and I I get it because I like once again this film could have easily and probably has been a theater piece at some point I think it would have made it for an excellent night of theater I think it still could I don't know if this you know script has been done as a stage play but I would suggest that it could could easily be and what a couple of scrumptious characters but to be honest with you for whatever reason i just feel like um the prostitute you know between this one uh pretty woman aforementioned the best little whorehouse in texas uh wasn't there a prostitute character and taxi driver jody foster i mean you tell me there's been you know what was that movie the pretty baby with brooke shields and susan sarandon because i just watched brooke shields documentary all these movies that kind of i don't want to say they kind of they glamorize prostitution do they sensationalize it then you get a whole bunch of stripper movies you know they kind of do the same thing um i just wonder if they're part of the fucking problem and you're wondering well gee whiz mike what's the problem well i mean you know it's I, I, there's this fucking street guy that once told me this and you know we used to call this guy citizen x because he was one of these coffee house philosophers that always told you shit you didn't want to hear but what he said was um women are exhibitionists and men are voyeurs and you know i mean coming from the source this kind of street hustler guy that literally lived in a van outside the coffee house it's kind of a interesting statement, but in a way, you know, movies like this, Instagram models, models, our whole fucking society, uh, you know, you go on YouTube, you go, I don't even go on fucking TikTok, but I go on YouTube, and it's usually some hot chick shaking her ass in some thong or some yoga outfit or some fucking thing, and a bunch of guys simping, you know, uh, tweeting, oh, you're so hot, blah, 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 blah. So a movie like this, at, at one point, it, I mean, it, it kind of feels like this movie is a little, like, it's kind of like 30 years behind its time. Like, if this movie, Sanctuary, came out in 1997, it would be like the most extreme thing ever. But we've kind of seen this shit before at this point, you know? And I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm just saying it's not as cutting edge as it would like you to think that it is. The whole... Um, oh you know she's a prostitute but she's smart uh and they really love each other I mean, we've been through this shit before haven't we and um i just I, I guess in some ways uh for me at least they made the very best possible movie they could 
you know, from, I think, good direction. I think a good script. Or, you know, great acting. I give the acting high marks. Um, but they made the very best movie they could from a premise that I don't find terribly interesting anymore. You know? I just find it to be cliche and rote. And the underlying reason why I say that is we've seen all these goddamn prostitute movies. The, and the happy ending prostitute movie is just dumb. I mean, fuck. I should make a goddamn parody of that, okay? Uh, like the, the fucking scary movie Paradise Scream. Let's make a fucking happy ending prostitute movie comedy uh, parody, okay? Mel Brooks, for crying out loud. But I mean, I'm just saying... I'm not terribly impressed. I'm not terribly motivated. I'm not terribly enthralled um, by the whole happy ending prostitute movie uh, fucking cliche. It, it doesn't feel cutting edge to me anymore. And, um, you know, this is the type of movie that I would typically like. And I do like it uh, because of the acting. The, you know, the we don't have a lot of explosions. We don't have an overload of the senses. This movie was not made, you know, with every other country in mind, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe the French would like this movie, but they're not looking to get action figures or t-shirts or sequels out of this thing. So I like the genre of this fucking film, but I just feel like the premise, uh, the storyline, the, the core of it kind of bores me, to be honest with you. And I'm just at that point, I've seen a lot of fucking movies in my life. I've been in some goddamn movies. Uh, hard luck, you know, myself playing Civil Shepherd's son. Uh, I stole the goddamn scene with Elizabeth Shue and Meryl Streep in Hope Springs. Uh, working with Kevin Nash in a film that I co-wrote, sort of. Uh, but you know what? Um, this goddamn thing called filmmaking, I hold it to a higher standard. And I know that in many of my reviews, I'm a cheerleader for some of these fucking movies. And I like most movies, but, you know, I've noticed in the last six months or so, I'm getting a little more cynical, a little more um, discerning. Uh, because if you're going to put my ass in a seat for two hours, I'll give you my attention. But that's not going to make me pull any fucking punches, okay? So what do I think? I mean, I basically think uh, that this actress and the schlub of a guy, he did his part, but she's the dynamo of this thing. Some ass is going to park next to me now. Uh, she's the dynamo of this thing. You know, I have to be quiet for a moment. Hold on. Oh, God, I just wish they'd get out of their car. I'll show you some of my artwork in the meantime. This is wonderful art that I just created today. Uh, I should have built up to that one. So I think that's probably the most best one, the, the most interesting. I did this today. Let's see. What the hell's going on around here? There we go. So they're just kind of parking, but not actually getting out of the vehicle. They're just sitting there next to me. Uh, this is an avant-garde piece. And this is the rough draft of the avant-garde. But anyway, and I did one more. I guess I'll have to start talking again because whoever this is, they're not getting out of their vehicle anytime soon. They're just sitting there with the car running for no reason, which is odd to me, okay? Look at this wonderful art. Um, so anyway, I just feel like um, the actress, I think, has got a big career ahead of her. Uh, the director, I don't know if it's the same. I, th I think a different person wrote it. I want to say that the writer's name was Mika. I don't know if that's a male or a female. And why does it matter? Well, it kind of felt like another one of these movies that has a strong female character as written by a man. And I've done those movies myself. Okay, the impeccable and so forth. But whenever you kind of see... Whenever you see these movies with the strong female character as written by a man, you know that it's going to feel like it's written by a man. You know, it's like a guy's fantasy fuck. You know what I mean? Like whoever wrote this thing, this is the type of girl that he wants to fuck. And, uh, you know, and then whoever the director is, if the same person or not, 
I think it's two different people. They get a really steaming hot actress, young, beautiful, uh, ice cold actress, meaning like that uh, steeliness. And, uh, you know, she does a great job. And so you have an entertaining jaunt of a movie. I did like the short run time. I think it was just about uh, one hour and 38 minutes. So I'm glad that they didn't drag this thing on for two hours. I mean, compare this to Tar, which goes on for three hours with Kate, whatever the fuck, Blanchette. I thought this movie uh, was worth my time. I'm, I am glad that I saw it. Uh, and I, it's kind of one of those deals where I'd, I'd, I'm more interested in seeing if this filmmaker, this writer, and this actress especially have anything else up their wonderful sleeves for me in the future. Um, I don't think they made a bad movie. I, like I said, I enjoyed it. But is it a classic? No. Is it going to take any attention away from the spider verses and all the other goddamn things that the Marks are going to go see this weekend? No. So what else? Uh, this is one Mike Messier YouTube channel with all of Mike's instant movie reviews, my straight to camera rants. If you happen to be a pro wrestling fan or happen to be a sports fan, I encourage you to go to one pro wrestling and sports fan uh, YouTube channel, the numeral one, okay? Not spell it out, just the numeral one, pro wrestling and sports fan. Uh, that's me as well. And if you really want to challenge your goddamn senses, go to one man in a camera films, okay? Which has all of my wonderful fucking movies, okay? So that's it. I mean, I saw the movie. Uh, like I said, if it was made in 1997, it would be a bigger deal than it is now. Uh, performances were great. You know? I mean, I give them credit for, you know, making a movie that's interesting for an hour and 38 minutes with more or less two actors in one location. I give them up for that. But at the end of the goddamn day, prostitute, prostitute, prostitute. Prostitute with a heart of gold. Wow. Big fucking deal. So that's it, Mike Messier. This is Chobani Zero Sugar Yogurt. They're not sponsoring my goddamn video. Maybe they should.